Is a classroom management plan truly necessary? Who actually takes the time to do it, and why? What would it even look like? Hello! In today's video, we'll talk about classroom management plans. To run a classroom successfully, and to properly help students in their learning, rules and guidelines should be set and co-created with students. This will teach children how to behave in the classroom and abide by community rules that they take part in creating. So, what do we mean by developing a classroom management plan? And why is it essential to running a classroom with minimum negative disruptions? Well, then stick around till the end as we answer all these questions and more as we delve into this topic. All right then, let's get started. One of the biggest challenges noted by most educators around the world is managing the classroom. However, effective classroom management techniques allow teachers to maximize the behaviors that support and promote learning, while minimizing the behaviors that hinder learning for both individual students and groups of students. Thus, effective classroom management has all the following characteristics. A. Creates and maintains an orderly atmosphere in the classroom. B. Enhances meaningful academic learning and promotes emotional and social development. C. Involves time spent engaged in academic activities while decreasing negative behaviors. In other words, the objective of classroom management is order for the sake of learning, not order for order's sake. Every management plan is different from another, but they normally have these goals. Protect the teacher's well-being. Set rules and boundaries. Help build a meaningful relationship. Facilitate everyone in a strength-based approach. Connect with the parents and guardians of children. In short, the teachers ought to have a flexible plan in place to make sure that the strategies are properly outlined and applied in the classroom. The classroom management plan combines many things, like policies, guidelines, etc., and helps the teachers and the students to achieve their goals. So. How does one develop their own proper classroom management plan? Making a classroom management plan includes many things such as class rules, outlining steps for daily tasks, or outlining the consequences of different actions. Try the following steps to help you create a plan for your classroom. Number one, write down all your objectives. The first thing to do is to define all kinds of issues that you want to counter. When you jot down all your objectives, it will make it super easy for you to adjust them according to your teaching style. Moreover, you will be able to properly list them according to their importance. Number two, defining the learning goals. The next thing that you should focus on is your learning goals for all the students. Along with the types of classes and topics, you should also give a strategy for achieving these objectives. Apart from that, it helps the teacher to identify the opportunities that are available for better learning paving their way to all the relevant tools which can be used to achieve these goals. Ultimately, this creates a roadmap for you and your students during the school years and keeps you on track with the objectives of that particular school year. Number three, make rules on discipline. A well-maintained decorum is very important, so this is another step to having a classroom management plan. The teacher should entirely focus on the rules that promote the development of healthy habits among their students. Obviously, the rules shouldn't restrict the freedom of the children, but maintain a proper environment. The rules should actually give students the opportunity to make the right choices instead of controlling their behaviors. It is best to co-construct rules with students and display them on an anchor chart. If students feel they have a role in creating the rules of their community, it is more likely that they will take an active role in enforcing them. Number four, determine the needs of your students. The teacher should tell their students what they expect from them so they can try to meet their objectives. At times, some students need more encouragement or help with stuff than others. So in order to identify these needs, teachers need to prepare for them. Again, this step should be done in collaboration with students. Number five, instruct and present information. Whether reading from a book, using manipulatives like blocks with children, or projecting images on a screen for older students, it's essential to convey information and concepts in relevant and differentiated ways. Number six, engage your students. 
use a variety of instructional activities, formative assessments, flexible grouping, and choose relevant and meaningful content that connects to the sociocultural life worlds of your students. Number seven, give students time to practice and ask questions. Once you deliver the lecture, give the students some time to process that information and digest it. Tell them to practice the things you taught, and the best ways to practice are the following. Guided practice, collaborative practice, independent practice. Number eight, end the lesson. The teacher should always finish up the lesson with a summary of the whole lecture. The overview of the lesson should include all the main concepts that were taught. Moreover, ask the students what they learned and how will they implement that. And also, before leaving, the teacher should inform the students about what they will be covering in the next class, so they know what to expect. Number nine, evaluation. Keep a reflective journal. Driscoll and Ta offer us a simple framework for reflection. What, so what, now what? Ask yourself questions. Were you able to achieve all the learning objectives that you planned? Were there any notable or problematic behaviors? What does the data from your formative assessments tell you? This will help you plan the next lesson and interactions with students. Summary. The first step is writing down all your objectives. Defining the learning goals for yourself and your students is objective number two. Third, you need to collaborate with students to make rules on discipline to create a proper educational environment. Step number four, collaborate with students to determine their needs. Next, Number five, instruct and present information. Number six, engage with your students. Number seven, give students time to practice and ask questions. Number eight, end the lesson. Check in with your students, see what they learned. Let them know what to expect for the next class. Finally, evaluate yourself and your students' progress. What can you do better? What have you done well? What can you do better? Were there any areas where students were struggling? Where did students do well? Keep track of your classroom's progress to better sketch out your classroom management plan. That is a wrap on this video. We hope you liked it, and if you did, make sure to press the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to our channel to check out more mini lessons on educational topics. If you're a teacher, apply these strategies and let us know if it helped you, or tell us, how did you come up with the management plan in your classroom? Plus, if you have any questions or comments regarding different types of classroom management plans, make sure to write them in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for your service, educators. Until the next time, adios. Bye-bye. Ciao.